Hello and welcome to Monday Thursday Worship at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Bay City, Michigan. All that you will need for this service will be projected on your screen. We begin. In the name of our God, to whom all hearts are open, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Amen. We speak together. O Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy, and in your faithfulness come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. Jesus says to his people, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Do you believe this? We respond together, Yes, I believe. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. We pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. May your word keep our faith burning brightly that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alam goes on complaining forth our guilt and evil bearing and laden sins of earth none else the burden sharing goes patient on grows weak and faint to slaughter led without complaint that spotless life to offer shame and stripes and wounds and death anguish and mockery and says willing all this I suffer this lamb is Christ the soul's great friend the Lamb of God, our Savior. Him God the Father chose to send to gain for us His favor. Go forth, my Son, the Father said, and free my children from their dread. Guilt and condemnation, the wrath and stripes are hard to bear. But by your passion, they will share the fruit of your salvation. Yes, Father. Most willingly, I'll bear what you command me. My will conforms to your decree. I do what 
saving us by serving us. We begin then with the first lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, he also took the cup, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood. Instead, let a person examine himself and after doing so, let him eat of the bread and drink from the cup. This is the word of our Lord. We continue now with the psalm of the evening, Psalm 116, found on page 107 in the front part of Christian worship, a Lutheran hymnal. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice, he heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The Lord is gracious and righteous, when I was in great need, he saved me. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the Continue now with the Gospel lesson appointed for this Monday, Thursday, from the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved those who were his own in the world, he loved them to the end. By the time the supper took place, the devil had already put the idea into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. 
Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God. He got up from the supper and laid aside his outer garment. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who asked him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, You do not understand what I am doing now, but later you will understand. Peter told him, You will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Lord, not just my feet, Simon Peter replied, but also my hands and my head. Jesus told him, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet, but his body is completely clean, and you are clean, but not all of you. Indeed, he knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, Not all of you are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer garment, he reclined at the table again. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord. You are right, because I am. Now if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Yes, I have given you an example, so that you also would do just as I have done for you. A new commandment I give you. Love one another, just as I have loved you so also you are to love one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends, the disciples are arguing again. It is not John's Gospel that tells us this, but Luke's. They are arguing in the upper room. They are arguing during the Passover meal. How disgraceful. And they are arguing about their favorite topic. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? Can you imagine it? Peter, who says, well, it's got to be me because Jesus told me directly that on this rock, on this confession of faith, I will build my church. And then there's Matthew, who says, well, it's got to be me because Jesus sought me out and Jesus had me throw a dinner party with him as the guest of honor. And then there's John. Who could forget about John? Who says, hands down, it's got to be me, because after all, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves. And so with that context in mind, we turn to our gospel lesson in the book of John, and we see Jesus silently get up from the table, take off his outer garment, wrap a towel around his waist, and begin to serve his disciples with the most menial of tasks, a task that was usually reserved for the slave of the household, washing dirty, disgusting feet. And so Jesus goes from disciple to disciple, and he gets to Peter, who tells him, you will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replies, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Jesus was not talking about the custom of foot washing here, but the condition of sin-soiled hearts. We belong to Jesus when our sins are washed away, when our hearts are made clean. If Jesus does not serve us in this way, then we have no relationship with him. And so Peter's tone goes to exuberance, and he says, Lord, not just my feet, Simon Peter replied, but also my hands and my head. Jesus told him, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet but his body is completely clean. Jesus uses the concrete custom of foot washing. He reminds Peter that only your feet need to be washed, Peter, because only your feet carry the dust and the dirt of the day. Once your feet are clean, 
you are cleaned. And then he takes that concrete example then and applies it spiritually when he says, and you are clean, but not all of you. Indeed, he knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. Jesus knew of one who may have said with his lips time and time again that Jesus is the teacher or Jesus is the Lord, but his heart at this point does not believe it. And so his heart remains unclean. But the other 11 disciples, they're clean. Their hearts are clean. Their hearts which were the centers of every sinful desire that led to every sinful word and every sinful action, those hearts, their hearts, were purified by Jesus' saving grace. What love! What love! You know, an awful lot has been written on the subject of love. Take the songs, for example. Everyone from Elvis Presley to Tina Turner. Everyone from Prince to Taylor Swift to Bruno Mars. And they have such catchy titles, don't they? In the name of love, can you feel the love tonight? Can't buy me love. The power of love. And then on top of that, there are all the books, all the movies, all the blogs, that you think we'd get it at this point. But, even as I speak, there is more being written about love, more books, more movies, more songs, in fact, I dare say that there is no other subject on which more has been written than the subject of love. And yet we still can't get it. Well, here it is in our Gospel lesson. Here is love. Here is love leading by example. Here is love that gives of, gives of himself in Holy Communion. This is my body given for you. This is my blood which is shed for you. Here is love that just a few hours later would be shown exponentially on Calvary's cross. This love is Jesus, who is God, and God is love. Jesus continues with the final verse of our lesson, and he says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And you may be thinking, well, that's not new. I've heard that before. In fact, that sounds like the golden rule. And yes, right behind, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, there it is. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the law of love, God's law of love. And it applies to everyone. But let's take a second look. To whom is Jesus speaking? It's not the world. It's the disciples. It's the eleven. At this point, Judas has gone off to betray Jesus. The circle is much narrower. Jesus who makes all things new. Jesus, who has shown his disciples immeasurable love, now says to them, Go, be examples, be servants 
in love. Be a servant toward one another. Be patient in love, not self-serving. Have a self-sacrificing attitude when it comes to love. Do not worry about being repaid. Rather, go the extra mile. Do all that you can for that one person. Do all that is necessary to show your love to them and to others like them, especially your brothers and sisters who share the faith. For this is not love that's born of the law, but love that is born of faith. And this is love that the world has not seen. This is love that marks you as a follower, as a disciple of Jesus. It is a love that glorifies Jesus. But, oh, the struggles. It is so hard, so hard to love God and love your neighbor, and maybe especially to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's a love that we cannot manufacture on our own. It's a love that the sinful nature within each of us wants no part of. Sure, the sinful nature may put up with the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, dot, 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 as long as you get something out of it. But that love isn't free. That love isn't willing. That love isn't persistent. That love is not selfless. Selfless love is not compatible with the sinful nature. It wants nothing to do with it. However, that is the love that Jesus has for you and me. That is the love that compelled Jesus to be betrayed, to be arrested, to be tried. That is love that compelled Jesus to be crucified. And that is love that compelled him to burst forth from the clutches of death, to give you and me eternal life forever. Even though we have nothing to offer him, even though we could not possibly repay him. By his love for our lives, Jesus is glorified, and we are renewed again and again in that love through the forgiveness of sins. And we are made to love not only our God, not only our Savior, but to love one another and show that love to one another and serve one another and show the world that we are followers of Jesus. All this brings glory to his saving name. What is love? By God's grace, you know, love is Jesus. By God's grace, through faith in Jesus, you have that same love. It is constant in your heart. It is burning brightly in your heart. Strengthened, as always, by word and sacraments. A love that you can show your brothers and sisters in Christ. A love that you can show the world in thanks and praise to your Savior. We love, you love, because our Savior first loved us. Amen. We continue now with prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.